Today's paper is NUA, Visual Synthesis Pre-Training for Neural Visual World Creation. The paper proposes a unified multimodal pre-trained model. The proposed model is able to generate or manipulate existing visual data, like images or videos, um, in order to handle language, image, and video at the same time, authors propose a 3D transformer encoder decoder framework. It deals with videos as 3D dataset and handles text as 1D dataset and image as 2D dataset. Also, a 3D nearby attention mechanism called 3DNA is proposed to reduce the computational complexity. The model is evaluated on eight downstream tasks. Um, I won't go through all of them in this presentation. However, it achieves state-of-the-art results on text-to-image generation, text-to-video generation, and video prediction tasks. Now, the proposed neural model handles instances like texts, images, videos, and sketches as a unified representation. Um, in order to achieve this, they use representation X of shape H by W by S by D, where H and W are height and width in spatial axis, and S denotes the number of tokens in the temporal axis, like in time, and D is the dimension of each token. Okay, uh, let's first talk about the text domain. Because texts are discrete, a lowercase byte pair encoding is used to tokenize and embed text into space by 1 by 1 by S by D. Uh, because text does not have any spatial dimension, H and W is set to 1, and S can now be uh, seen as a sequence length. Now, in the image domain, the idea to represent the uh, image is adopted from VQVAE. Uh, this is shown in the figure on the right. Uh, this figure comes from the VQVAE paper and this shows the overall idea. Uh, in VQVAE, the model trains a learnable codebook to make a connection between raw continuous image pixels and discrete tokens. Um, to do this, uh, it uses an encoder to map an image to this new space of size W by H, so W by H grid features, and the model is trained to find the closest token in the codebook for each uh, encoded feature in the grid cell. Okay, um, in the video domain, we can think of this as an image with temporal dimension, which is in time. Um, authors see videos as an extension from the image domain. Um, they simply use two-dimensional VQGAN to encode each frame of a video and show that this simple way can also generate temporally consistent videos and at the same time benefit from both image and video datasets. Lastly, uh, in the sketch domain, the authors see image sketches as an image with special channels. Um, looking at the example of a sketch, we can see that this is like a mask force segmentation, where each pixel now gets a, a value C that represents a class that it wants to represent. Uh, by training an additional VQGAN for image sketches as well, um, the authors finally get an embedded image representation, R, which is in uh, shape H by W by 1 by D. Now, let's see how this model works. Um, using the 3D attention mechanism called 3DNA, um, also known as uh, three-dimensional nearest attention, uh, encoder and decoder is built using this module. Um, this 3DNA is an attention mechanism for three-dimensional data representation, as explained earlier in the slide. Um, I won't go through this uh, module in detail in this presentation. 
but just think of this as an attention mechanism similar to the 2D attention, but it's in three-dimensional space. Now, in the encoder part, it's uh, an adaptive encoder that can take different representations like texts, image sketch, or video sketches. Uh, we see here that it works like a switch, so it can take input uh, as in as it can take text as an input, or it could either take um, image sketches or sequence of sketches as well. Um, the embedded representation from the encoder, and now uh, once we get that, then this can be fed into the decoder as an input. Then the decoder then produces visual representations, uh, which is conditioned on the embedded representation. For example, um, we see in the figure that the encoder first encodes um, text input that says a light wind blew across the country road. Uh, the embedded token representation of this sequence uh, is then used by the decoder to produce an image describing the input text sequence. Uh, this is not only restricted to image, but as we can see in the figure, um, decoder can also generate um, uh, missing images or a sequence of video frames. Uh, for image or video manipulation task, uh, the input to the decoder is embedded representation of partial images or videos. Um, the decoder then learns to either fill in the missing region in an image. If an input is a partial image, it learns to fill the missing, uh, the missing part. Or it learns to generate images or sequence of video frames, depending on the task. Now, this model is first trained on three data sets. Um, these are conceptual captions, which is for um, text to image generation task, uh, moments in time data set um, for video prediction, and VATEX data set for text to video generation. So the model is first pre trained on these three data sets. Now, the tables in this slide um, shows the performance of the model on various downstream tasks. Uh, first, in this table, it shows the performance of the newer model, an fine-tuned newer model on text-to-image generation task. Uh, we can see that the model achieves good FID score and inception score in this task. Uh, when evaluated using the clip sim metric as shown in the last column, the model achieves state-of-the-art results. Um, this evaluation metric called uh, clip sim um, incorporates clip model to calculate the semantic similarity between the input text and the generated image. Now, in the second table, it shows the performance of the model on text-to-video generation task. Uh, we see on this downstream task that the model achieves best performance on all the metrics. Lastly, uh, on video prediction fine-tuning task as well, the model achieves state-of-the-art result. Um, there are uh, results in other tasks as well, like in sketch to image, uh, image completion, or some other tasks. Um, it's in the paper. Uh, for more details, I suggest reading the paper in detail. Uh, now, I'm going to just show some of the qualitative results of the newer model on different tasks. Uh, the first result is a qualitative result on text to image tasks. So uh, it takes a sequence of text as an input, and based on that text, uh, it, the model generates an image. So for example, if we see, let's say, uh, this column right here, it says uh, it takes an, a sequence of text that says a green train is coming down the tracks. And if we see the result uh, from XMC GAN, we see uh, the train well, it doesn't look green. It has a 
a color of blue at, at front so I don't think it's a good output but however if we see the result of the model newer uh, we can see that the train the color of the train is definitely green here and in the next column it says a, it takes an input a text a group of skiers are preparing to ski down a mountain and the model from XMC the result from XMC again, uh, well, it's definitely on, on the mountain, uh, but the quality of people when compared to the newer model is low. So um, the newer model, as we can see the result, it produces more realistic images. And in this figure, it shows some qualitative results of newer on text to video tasks so instead of previous uh, task which produced uh, an image given a sequence of text uh, in this task a newer model tries to produce a sequence of images so let's see uh, on the left it says input text is playing golf on grass uh, if we see the outputs from other models we see that it has lots of artifacts but however in the last row we see the result of newer model and the quality is a lot uh, better compared to other models as well and in other results we see that the amount of artifacts that newer model creates is a lot less compared to other models now this figure shows the result of newer model in sketch to image task. So an input is given right here, uh, I guess. So in the sketch, it says that, let's say in this green region, should say that this green region should be a bus, this blue region should be another car, and this brown region should be a ground. So um, given this sketch as an input to the model, then the model produces realistic images like in the this row two rows right here and this is the result in another task called um, image completion so the model takes an incomplete image as an input as shown here so half of the image is uh, masked so given that as an input to the model uh, the newer model tries to generate realistic images as shown in these two rows. So some more results as well, uh, but this is in the image manipulation task and I get I think this result is very interesting. So what it does is uh, the model takes a raw image and it also takes as an input a sequence of text that what it wants to do to the original image. So we have an image right here that shows I guess a back backyard and um, it takes this image and takes a mask region um, it's the mask regions colored yellow right here and a sequence of text that what it wants to do to this masked region and it says a photo of a camping tent so what the model does is the newer model tries to add a camping tent to this to this mask region and the final output as we can see is very good compared to this another work uh, paint by word the 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 shape of a tent is blended in much better compared to this model and this not only works in the static image but it it also can do this in a video domain as well so uh, in this result, the very top row shows the sequence of raw videos and uh, each row shows different manipulation performed to the raw video. So the first manipulation, it says the diver is swimming to the surface. So we can see the diver from the first frame as it progresses. The diver is uh, going upwards towards the surface and if the model takes text sequence that says um, the diver is swimming to the bottom we can see that the diver as video frame progresses the diver swims downwards 
Um, there are more examples of this new model in the GitHub repository. I'll add the link in the description. Uh, that's all for today, and I'll see you next time with a new paper.